pockets. But, uh, but yeah, n- now we're on to this co-main event, which was really the first shocker of the night. And, uh, man, honestly, this was the fight. I'll be completely honest, and maybe this makes me a casual, uh, but uh, I was uh, I was looking forward to this fight a little bit more than the main event, just because we, we've been riding the Bozer hype train. Like, I, I, I don't know. I was uh, – I feel very differently now, hindsight 2020, but I'll be real, like, going up to it, I was like, man, I'm ready for this Bozer fight, dog. I even posted something on my Instagram story, like, like oh, can't no, this, can't wait for this Bozer fight. I mean, Prel- prelims McGee. Man, I know. I I, 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 I drank the Kool-Aid, dog. I drank the Kool-Aid. You drank too much prelim Kool-Aid. He made it to a Kool-Aid. He made it to a co-made against a vet and just, couldn't fucking get, dude. Honestly, but it, I'm, I, wasn't the, I wasn't the only one. Let's get to it here. Bozer was a minus three forty favorite. So he should have won of, this fight. He should have been able to win Vegas this fight. Was like feeling it too. I'm not. The I only know, one like out here I, in I, Apple I, Island. I think Bozer should have been able to win the fight because there was only one path to victory for Andre Arlovsky, and it's exactly what happened. And so for Bozer to not have fight a better fight and to like actually take some chances because like Arlovsky's chin is very questionable. And it's been shown multiple times recently, and it's been and also shown that he Bozer's coaches because they went into it with like a counter punching game plan, and then like no yeah. alternative game plan. Right, like, you like, know what I'm saying? Arl- so I... Yeah, exactly. Like Arlovsky does not lead the action nowadays at all. Yeah, yeah, and he admits that he was like literally talking about that. Uh, the yeah, Arlovsky was a plus two seventy underdog uh, heavyweight fight, uh, and I mean Bozer. This is really interesting up and comer. He's only he fights heavyweight. The heavyweight cutoff is what two sixty five, right? Yeah. And, and Bozer fights at like barely two thirty. Um, like two thirty two, yeah. Yeah, he he's so he doesn't cut any weight really. He's known for being um like a, a smaller, faster striker in the heavyweight division. Really been on the up and coming. We've done a few beefy boys on him. I mean, he's starched everybody he's really been in the ring ri- with. So there's a lot of hype behind him. Um, uh, he had a nice you know little hype train behind him and. I was all always on board, all aboard hype train. You know how I like to do. Oh it. yeah, I'm a free, frequent flyer on the hype train. Uh, but uh, so I was really excited to see because this was his first like legit test. Like 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 Harrison alluded to a second ago, call me prelim McGee. A lot of these other guys he stars were like lower end guys, prelim guys. I don't know debuts, old veterans on their way out. Just you know, not necessarily top end competition. And so this was his fr- true. Test. I mean, Arlovsky's older, but I mean, Arlovsky is still like certified. You know what I mean? He's he's a legit UFC fighter. Heavy oh yeah, and, oh yeah. Like he has so legit skills. Th- this was kind of like his gatekeeper moment. Like they were using Arlovsky as the gatekeeper. Bozier was the young up and comer with the head of steam. Classic gatekeeper in UFC matchup. Like we alluded to earlier, probably questionable that this was the co-main, but I think that speaks to how popular Tanner Bozer's hot track. Yeah. yeah, the mullet's easily to, easy to sell. Well, how'd, you score the, how'd you score the first? So I literally, first off, not the most exciting fight. Kind, um, I, I literally, my notes for round one was stagnant, but Bozer more active, largely with the leg kicks. That was kind of a theme of the night. Bozer was... Honestly, throwing a lot of really good leg kicks, and um, yeah, and he he was um now I mean Arlovsky was kind of taking them like a G, um, maybe even checking a couple of them, but uh, Bozer's leg kicks were impressive like like most of the night, and I think that was another part of his strategy that just maybe didn't resonate with the judges, but uh, I did give round one to Bozer. How about you? I I actually did as well, like. Literally, what I said is that Arlovsky kind of caught him hard at the end, but Bozer was more active and more just active. like just kind of landed like for like the lack of shit that was done, he led the action. So it exactly. was like exactly. It's so like it feels like even wrong to like use the word active because essentially round one was a fucking like just uh, man. It, I don't know. It's like if you ever played Battleship and like neither one of you guys are hitting shit for like the first however. Many oh minutes. yeah. Like 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 it just they were both trying to find the range. It was like, like they, I think Cruz alluded to it. It was like counter puncher versus counter puncher. And like, if a counter puncher has nothing to counter, it doesn't result in a whole lot. And that's kind of what, but that's what I'm saying. So in this moment where like nothing was really happening and they were dancing around on the outside, Bozer was at least landing leg kicks in the first round. So that's right. Why, like, yeah. I, I gave round one to, um, to Bozer. Um, but man, that was a, um, 
Round round two was definitely I gave to Arlovsky, right? You gave to Arlovsky. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. He started yeah, yeah. getting some some pretty big shots. I thought. Yeah. He. I thought. I thought Bozer was hurt. Like Taha. Me too. The last fight, I said that like I never really felt like Taha was going to win the fight. And round two, you started to be like, "Oh shit, not me." Like, I don't know about this Bozer, and and I, I'll be real. I was about this fucking close to putting fifty bucks on Bozer. Like I I I was. Like I said, feeling the hype train. I was about a fucking nut hair away from from putting fifty on Bozer, so I, I'm super glad I did it. But uh, but See, like I, round two, I I would have been losing my mind in round two if I had put that money on Bozer. Well, I thought Bozer, uh, honestly, would have would have come with a better game plan. Like I in my notes before the fight, like I even thought or I said, like I think he'll figure it out and like get an effective striking combination working, right? Like where he leads in. He never did that, and it let Arlovsky get that, like, weird decision vibe where it's like, if this goes to a decision, does Andre Arlovsky lose? Because he has a knack for winning these, like, low-activity fights. Yeah, well, and Bozer has a reputation for not going to decisions. He's a, he's a knockout specialist. He's a, he throws hands, and that's what he's done so far in the UFC. Uh, so, yeah, I, I honestly, I bet a bunch of people probably bet the under 1.5 and, and lost that. Like, I bet yeah. Bozer, I bet Vegas killed on the under one point five bet, um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, round two. So I had it one one round to one round. Um, Me too. You know, nineteen nineteen going into round three, and then um, I, I want to hear your takes on round three. I'm, I'm gonna throw you under the bus first. <laughs> Man, round three was just like. Bozer was getting. He kind of got back to his leg kicks, but yeah. then it was like Arlovsky was still connecting, and then. But Bo- Bozer kind of was connecting, too. And it was, like, a real toss-up for me. Like, I wrote in my notes that, like, no one's going to get robbed because this round's a complete toss-up. Yeah. I kind of leaned Bozer. Okay. so But I'm not making any noise about that decision being no, Torlovsky. It was so close. It was so close. And, like, just keeping it real, if Bozer wanted to win this fight, he was going to win it in the first two rounds, in my opinion, just his style yeah. of fighting. So the fact that it even made it to decision kind of favors Arlovsky to begin with. Oh, yeah. But, but specifically addressing the third round, um, it was the classic example of quantity versus quality. Um, leg kicks included, Bozer outpointed the shit out of Orlovs- Ar- Arlovsky in uh, round three. Right. However, Arlovsky was never in a lick of trouble at all. He was never in danger. Well, Arlovsky landed really only a couple of good shots in the They were pretty round. big shots, though. Bozer was, like, legit hurt. And, like, just watching the fight, you were like, oh, is this it? Like, you kind of leaned up. Like the, the eye, like, like the eye test was leaning toward Arlovsky for sure, unless you were just appreciating the quantity and, like, the volume. Which is where, and we've talked about this a million times, is just how – it's super subjective, yeah, because it, it, I've seen judges that would have scored that for Bozer off the quantity and the leg kicks, and there's certain judges that are like, if you outpoint him, I don't give a fuck how hard he hits you, you outpointed the fuck out of him. And I'm, you, so there, and it's so subjective. And then there's other judges, apparently, which were judging this fight that are like, you know, damage, damage, they value damage. Or who hurt who or who got closer to finishing who. And it just really depends on what lens you're vo- you're viewing it through. You know, if you're viewing it through like a kind of like a karate point scoring system, then Bozer won the fuck out of this fight. But if yeah. you're viewing it through like a, you know what I'm saying? Who like more of a street fight kind of like sense? Like who whooped whose ass? Who hurt who more? Who got closer to finishing who? And then I mean, I think it's no question it's Arlovsky. And, and, and there's really a solid ass argument to be made for both guys. Um, when it was all said and do, done, and this is the part that I found interesting, the judges seemed to all agree with each other that it was. Yeah, um, they all, yeah. 29 28 Arlovsky. 29 28 Arlovsky. Yeah, so I thought that was a little interesting. So I'm assuming they gave Arlovsky two and three and both. Yeah, for one. sure. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe I, there might have been a judge that actually gave one. Arlovsky and two Arlovsky and three to Bozer. It would be really sometimes those judges do shit like that, which is yeah. weird. So it'd be really interesting to see the round by round breakdown of the judges. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I 
I'm shocked. Like, if it would have been a split decision, I don't know. I, I, I'm i just shocked that all three judges saw it the same way. But like I said, maybe they didn't. Maybe it just looks that way on paper. But, uh, yeah, all three judges, unanimous decision, 29-28 Arlovsky. Bozer was shocked, which kind of lets you know that, like, the leg kick out pointing him was kind of a part of his game plan, maybe? Which seems oh, stupid. yeah. Which seems like a stupid game plan. Like, his game plan should have been out there, like, go start the old guy, right? Like, especially, like, a young – Power punch. Yeah, I, line. yeah, like I, I, that's like what I'm saying. Game like, should have been like foot on the gas, right? Yeah, that's I thought he would figure that out, but he just did not. And like, he let Arlovsky make this one of those weird fights that drags to a decision, which is like, Ar- that's Arlovsky's specialty recently. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't think Tanner Bozer's career is derailed. Hype train's definitely gonna lose steam. Which may be good for him. Maybe he was reading his own press clippings a little bit. Um, and and yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Bozer. Because it's just weird, man. Like if Bozer would have gotten like out grappled, I would have been like, you know, like yeah, Bozer is not that good of a grappler. But he kind of got outstruck in a way, which oh yeah, him, like I don't know. He kind of got beat out of his own game plan. I don't know. It does make you kind of pause and wonder, you know, like what Bozer's ceiling is, where as of, I mean, if you had asked me two weeks ago, I thought, you know, in the words of Michael Jordan, that Bozer's ceiling was the roof. And like, <laughs> but, but you know, I don't know. It's just interesting. It, it, man, life comes at you fast in the UFC, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Especially at heavyweight because you get the, – the heavyweights are all – like top 15 heavyweights are all – like they have something. Each one of them has something they do well. And you just yeah. have to be able to, you know, it's all matchups in the heavyweight division, to be honest. It's mostly matchups. That's fair. That's fair. Like, and besides Nganu, because Nganu just starches everyone now, apparently. That dude, I can't wait to see him fight again. Like, me too. I'm really looking forward to seeing him fight.